I would like to explain what I believe uh, is the mechanism behind how UFOs uh, exhibit anti-gravity effects and why we see UFOs as matter and light. And first of all, I'd like to explain the fourth dimension and the three dimensions of space. Um, if we consider ourselves to be standing here and we see this way, then let's say there's a cliff. It's over here. The cliff's over here. And so what we We see the cliff as we would every day and so we can say that this cliff is parallel to us we're we're aligned this way and the cliff the face of the cliff is aligned this way so we see the rocks and anything on the cliff face uh, that's aligned parallel to us as matter so anything this way we see as matter my aligned straight up this way. Now let's say that there's a ledge on the cliff right here. And this ledge on the cliff is uh, aligned with our eyesight and we can't see it because it's so skinny and it's right in our eye line of sight that we can't see it but it's there. Um, this is what we call um, time or uh, or uh, a light. So this direction we call matter, and it lies within space. And this direction we call uh, light, and it lies within time. So that's why we can't see the dimension of time. Uh, this is the fourth dimension and this is the uh, three dimensions of space. We live here. This is where we build our houses and go to work and meet our friends and family. This is everything we know and it exists here. Everything that we cannot see or perceive outside of ourselves exists in this dimension, the fourth dimension of time. And the reason we can't see it is because it's aligned this way. It's perpendicular to our, uh, to, to our alignment. It's perpendicular. That would be like this. That's 90 degrees. And the reason we can see this is because it's parallel. And so that would be right here. That's uh, zero degrees. So anything that's zero degrees we see is complete completely as matter. Anything that's 90 degrees, we see completely as light. And you can think of it, if you go out and find a cliff somewhere and find a ledge on it that's very skinny and line your eyes sign up with it, you know, it's going to be very hard to see that ledge. So it's the same thing, but you can think of that ledge as squish it down to absolutely no dimension in this direction, and that's the fourth dimension of time. It, has a dimension this way, but no dimension this way, and so we can't see it. So this can be written like this. And this is the angle. And anything on this side it exists in space, and we see it as matter. And anything in this direction we see as uh, time, we experience this time and we see it as uh, light. And so this hypotenuse here we would call mass. And uh, it's composed of time and space. And so mass is composed of light and matter. And that can be written like this.
And so mass is composed of matter and light. That's a little different from the way we think of it today, but I believe that this is a more accurate. So light is matter. You can take matter and move it this way, you'll convert it into light. And if you take light and move it that way, you can convert it into matter. So matter and light are the same thing. And mass is a composition of the two. So how does this relate to UFOs and gravity? Well, matter and light are both subject to gravity. Um, gravity is curved by mass, some mass, and then if you're another mass and you're out here, you're going to be attracted along this curvature of space uh, towards this other mass. If your mass, even light, if lights, this is a, at a zero degree angle to space, and light is at a 90 degree angle to space, but it's still going to have to follow the curvature of space. So it doesn't matter if you're matter or light, you're both are under the influence of gravity. But what if somehow you could stretch space and make a cliff out of it that's uh, 90 degrees to the surface of space? You take and now what would happen if you're light or, ma or, ma or matter, you both, you're both attracted towards this, this point here, but if you get to this stretched space, you'll stop. You'll be like standing on a, be like a falling off this cliff, but once you hit the ledge, you just stand, you, you stop. You won't fall any further. You'll just be standing there. This guy will think you're floating in space. He can see you, but he can't see the ledge. So he or she, they'll think that you're uh, floating in space. Same thing here. Uh, it would, you'd be on a ledge of space. Anybody else would think that you're just floating, but you would actually be on this stretched space. So how do you do that? This is my theory. I think UFOs have the ability to, to uh, stretch space, they, some machine like this, when it's, when it's aligned this way in, in the direction of space, we see, it as a, we see it as a UFO, as matter, and it's being pulled down by gravity. And then when we align it this way in the direction of time, we see it as light. That's light, actually. You know, it's a beam of light. We see it as light. And, um, and it's no longer affected by gravity. It's on this ledge of space that's created by the machine. And then, you know, you have all these other angles in between. As you move the hypotenuse up and down, you get combination of light and matter and you know sometimes it'll be looking like this under the influence of gravity sometimes it'll be brighter more transparent and somewhat under the influence of gravity and then it'll sometimes it'll look like complete light completely uh, uh, avoid and, and it doesn't it's not under the influence of gravity at all so that's why I think that when people describe UFOs that they're saying they they talk about it being you know made with light, it's got a very bright, or sometimes they'll talk about it transitioning from one to the other, you know, and people or you know, it looks like it's transparent, it'll change shapes, you know, and I think that's what's going on. I think that's how they control, how they are, how gravity affects their machine, or the UFO. That's what I think what's going on.